Namaste, Rood Studio Yogis. Uh, it's Tom Pitcher with Rood Studio. I'm going to be teaching a short psoas workout, um, so I'll get right to it. All right, as usual, we're going to begin in constructive rest position. It's laying on your back, your knees bent, feet on the ground. Letting your spine be neutral. This means that you have the natural curves in your lower back and your cervical spine. Just taking a few moments to check in with yourself, being aware of where you make contact with the ground. You might start with your feet, just being aware of the soles of your feet. And then moving your attention up to the back of your pelvis. And with pressure along the back of that great big bone, anchors our spine. And the psoas muscles relax. Those muscles that connect to your lower back, the vertebrae in your lower back. Go all the way down the pelvic bowl and connect right to the inside of the thigh bone. Connecting the top and the bottom of the body together. You may or may not have a deep sense of where your psoas muscles are. You may not have had the experience, but just trusting that they're there. And inviting them to relax. Imagine the muscles in your body like the beads in a necklace. And that as you relax them, the beads of the necklace begin to spread apart, just like the fibers of your muscles begin to expand, release. Belly rises and falls as you breathe. See if you can allow your belly to sink with your out breath. Center of the body, the belly button sinks towards the center of the earth with each out breath. Committing to a full exhale. And continuing with grounding, you might feel that your upper back, shoulder blades, and each of your arms supported by the ground and then the support of the back of your head gentle pressure reassurance the ground the earth being beneath you seeing if you can relax the roof of your mouth right down the center of the roof of your mouth you have a, a ridge that ridge lies over an old joint in the skull. You need to be able to move from your infants. Just imagining that the roof of your mouth expands from that central ridge up to the sides. The body remembers that movement. Relaxing the roof of your mouth. Your jaw relaxes, the muscles in your face relax. And with each out breath, the body is firmly grounded on all the points of contact. You can remain in this position, just breathing. Eyes can be open or closed. If you're open, just having a soft gaze. And we'll remain here for a few more moments as I bring up the bell. To signal the end of the beginning stillness. Just 
just listening to the sound of the bell. Noticing where you cease to hear it. Taking a deeper in-breath and a longer out-breath. Drawing your knees up towards your chest and rolling over to your right side. From here, what I'll ask you to do next is actually to grab yourself a chair. I know a lot of you are at home Spending a lot of time maybe on the couch, if you're like me, watching Netflix, watching Amazon Prime, whatever the case may be, maybe watching YouTube as you are now. Um, and so sitting on the couch is what we do a lot. So from a seated position, let's take a sitting right up at the edge of the seat so you can sit upright. It's going to do a little bit of a test for the psoas muscle. So for this, you're going to start with your knees facing forward and then just walk your right knee off to your side so that you're your thigh is kind of pointing off at about a 45 degree angle. And then with your right hand, giving some resistance as you lift your right leg. I'm lifting my right leg off the ground, pressing up through my knee. And I'll notice, begin to feel some tension here through this cord here. And that's a signal that the psoas muscle is working. And you can let that come back down. If you want to just alternate between breathing in, pressing up, Breathing out, relaxing down. Breathing in, pressing up. Breathing out, relaxing down. This is just to sort of help you be aware internally, breathing in, of where that psoas muscle is, breathing out so you can feel it within your body. And one more time, breathing in, pressing up, pressing down, giving firm pressure, breathing out back down. So you're going to move that knee and take the other knee out. So this is the left knee out to the side. And with the in-breath, pressing firmly up with the knee, pressing down with the hand. And you can do this with your breath. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, in, breathing out, remembering to stay upright as you do this, breathing in, and breathing out. Okay, great, so you've got the psoas muscles turned on, kind of feeling that, maybe even feeling them a little bit fatigued right now, that's, and that's a good sign, it means you're working them, it helps your body know where they are. For this next movement, it's actually going to be kind of helpful to, to feel that psoas muscle be a little bit tired because you want to be able to know whether we're actually stretching it or not. And that's the goal of this next movement, which is called the psoas walk. So psoas walk starts with your feet uh, parallel, pointing forward. So your toes should be facing forward. One of the things that the people often do naturally is they'll kind of turn their toes out to the side without even realizing they're doing it. So you just want to make sure you check to make sure your toes are truly pointing forward. Um, this is going to keep your hips in alignment facing forward, and it's also going to help you to access a stretch on your psoas muscle. The next part of this, component of this, is to lift your hip crests and kind of see how lifting your hip crests doesn't necessarily mean you round out your back. Um, just lifting them while keeping your back upright. So the opposite of lifting your hip crests is this. Tina likes to call that the duck butt. When want to rotate your hip in the opposite direction. Keep them lifted, keep them raised. And then as you do this throughout the motion, hip crests are lifted. And then projecting your hips forward like you're on a sliding rocker. You're going to push off with your back foot, back heel comes off the ground. Hips remain facing forward. 
bending and straightening your front leg. Now there's a tendency for people to want to go up and down as they do this. They kind of do something like this and go back and forth. Just try to keep your head level, keep your hips level as you go forward as much as you can. And you should feel that same region that you were working on before being stretched, that region that you were strengthening before by pressing your, your hand down against your knee. That same region should be stretched right now, kind of feeling it, filling with blood. If you want extra intensity with this, your front foot almost drags back like a scissors motion as your front foot drags forward, lifting your hip crests. Another cue that students, um, I sometimes give students is to make sure that your back knee remains straight. Just notice that that's something that will happen too is the back knee will want to bend. So this can go ahead and you make this your last one. And then we'll work on the other side. Again, making sure to start off with both sets of toes facing, facing forward. Hips are facing forward. Feet are about hip width apart. Lifting your hip crest, pushing off with your back foot, making sure that you keep your head level with the horizon. Hips are lifting and moving forward as if on a sliding rocker. Again, you should be able to feel that same muscle that you were working before, this time being more stretched. And drag yourself forward a little bit, drawing your front foot back, back foot forward to create sort of a scissors motion, action, and resistance, creating some stretch through the psoas muscle. Getting my foot crack there. Wonder if that's picking that up on YouTube. It's good for the feet too. Yeah, so the reason I bring this up in the context of our coronavirus days sitting at home is because a lot of times the reason the psoas muscle um, is dysfunctional or not as functional as it could be in a lot of people in modern America is that we spend a lot of time sitting and the muscle which normally stabilizes the spine isn't forced to do much work. I'm going to make that your last one. And so therefore it gets weak. And when the psoas muscle gets weak, it doesn't have enough strength, what the body does to compensate for that is it tightens it up. Um, to sort of compensate for the fact that it's a weak muscle. It makes it work really hard at the times when it needs to. Um, and so we end up with the worst of both worlds, a muscle that's both tight and weak. So these exercises are designed to sort of help build strength while stretching out that muscle. So we're going to do a little sun salutation, thinking about that psoas muscle as we go through it. So we're going to start up the top of your mat, toes facing forward, just like before, feet about hip width apart, palms together, and namaste. Anjali Mudra. Posture is Tadasana, our mountain pose. And with your out breath, letting your hands go down and back. With your in breath, arms come forward and up. And as you breathe out, tipping forward from the waist to touch down, letting your head hang. Looking back between your legs, left leg steps back. Left knee either hovers like this, or you can let it come down, or some mixture between those two. And whatever you do, um, you can work with the psoas here. So taking your front foot and dragging it back. It's not actually going to move. You're just going to make a scissors motion like you're dragging your foot back a little bit. Back foot presses down and drags forward. Or if your knee is on the ground, you really have to press down through your back foot and then drag your back foot forward. Now, some people don't have this much of a reach. You might have it like this. That's totally fine. But just getting engaged, you can feel the... Uh, hamstring muscles and the psoas muscles turning on here. Look up. As you breathe out, stepping back into downward facing dog, really sending your hips up and back, lengthening the spine, coming forward to plank or half plank. Half plank is like this with the, the knees down. Keeping the whole body like a board as you come down. Prone mountain. Okay. So prone mountain, pressing down to the tops of your feet, pressing down to the pubic bone, bending between your shoulder blades to come up into little cobra. And with your out breath, pushing up and back, downward facing dog again, sending your hips up and back. And looking between your hands to where you're gonna step, left foot steps back forward, 
You can do a three-legged dog if you want, or just do a regular step forward. And now you've got the other foot forward, the other foot back. So just sort of dragging your front foot back, back foot forward, pressing down through the back foot, and dragging forward. Maybe you have your knee down, and then you want to really make sure you're pressing down through the back foot as you drag it forward. You can feel those hamstrings turning on, so as muscle looking up. As you breathe out, stepping forward into forward fold, letting your head hang. And with your in-breath, pressing your palms and your shins, extending your spine to number seven. As you breathe out, tipping forward, forward fold, letting your head hang. And with your in-breath, coming all the way up, arms reach overhead, reaching up that wall, shoulders down back, breathing out, palms come back together. All right, for the other side, with your out-breath, hands go down and back. With your in-breath, arms come forward and up. As you breathe out, tipping forward from the waist to touch down, letting your head hang. Maybe introduce a little bit of organic movement, gently nodding your head yes, slowly and gently bringing the chin to chest, just to move the cervical spine the neck. Oh, that feels great. Next, we get so stiff. And just letting your head hang. Then turn your head side to side, chin to each shoulder. If you're slowly shaking your head no, getting a little twist on the cervical spine. And just letting your head hang. Looking back between your legs to where you'll step. This time the right foot starts stepping back. You can engage the, the uh, similar movement as before, but this time front foot presses forward, back foot presses back as the back foot presses down into the ground. So doing this is just strengthening the psoas muscle at the other extreme. So instead of drawing the muscles together, we're spreading them apart. Now we're kind of spreading, doing a spreading motion with the muscles. You can feel that especially, almost like you're lengthening that psoas muscle. Looking up, as you step back into downward facing dog, breathing out. Maybe you would like to introduce a little bit of organic movement here, raising and lowering your heels, and then bringing that to a stop. With your in-breath coming forward to plank or half plank, your choice, bringing the body down like a plank, so the hips and the torso come down at the same time. Looking down at the ground, pressing down to the feet, the pubic bone, bending between your shoulder blades to come up into a little cobra, and pushing up and back to downward facing dog. We're at Yogi's Choice, either three-legged dog to come forward, or just stepping forward, looking between your hands, your right foot steps forward, and this time pushing forward with your forward foot, Back with your back foot, you want to get this side as well. Lengthening so as muscle. Lengthening and strengthening. And with your out breath, stepping forward to forward fold, letting your head hang. And with your in-breath, pressing your hands into your shins, extending your spine so your body's in this number seven. Breathing out, forward fold. And with an in-breath coming all the way up, long spine, arms reach overhead. And as you breathe out, palms come back together. Palms in Namaskar. And just taking a few breaths here. You gotta look side to side. And then with your next out breath, let your hands go down and back. Your next in-breath, arms come forward and up. As you breathe out, tipping forward from the waist to touch down, letting your head hang. Looking back between your legs, left leg steps back. And this time, drawing front foot to the back, back foot to the front, getting that drawing together feeling in the muscles. Active legs, really get a lot of out of this if you Make your legs active in each yoga posture. With your out-breath, stepping back, downward-facing dog, 
Sending your hips up and back, lengthening your spine, letting your head hang. Downward dog isn't so much about stretching your hamstrings as it is about lengthening your spine. Coming forward to plank or half plank, lowering down as a plank, pressing down to the ground with your feet, pubic bone, bending between shoulder blades to come up into a little cobra, pushing up and back. Downward facing dog. And looking between your hands, left foot steps forward. And go ahead and draw your front foot back, back foot forward, looking up. As you breathe out, stepping forward, forward fold, letting your head hang. Your in breath, peeking up, extending your spine. Out breath, forward fold. And with your in breath, coming all the way up, arms reach overhead. With your out breath, palms come back together. Mindfully mudra and mountain pose. And with your next out breath, hands go down and back. Your next in breath, arms come forward and up. So you breathe out, tipping forward from the waist to touch down, letting your head hang. Right foot steps back, right knee hovers, looking up. This time pressing your front foot forward, back foot back, extending through the muscles. Through the psoas muscle, maybe even feel it here in your thigh, using the like, full range of the psoas. Stepping back into down dog. Coming forward to plank or half plank. And with an out breath, coming down all at once, pressing down to the feet, the bone, bending between your shoulder blades, pushing up and back to downward facing dog. All right, and so we're just going to hang out here in downward dog for a little bit. Um, for those of you who want an extra challenge, you can add a little bit of Another way of working at the psoas, which is to do three-legged dog to knee to nose. So that's going to look like this. You're going to keep your foot feet, your right foot connected to the ground, left foot lifts up. Hips are level as you can. And then with your out breath, drawing knee to nose, left knee to nose, and then extending back. Really crunching in, breathing out, breathing in as you extend back up. Getting out, knee to nose, and then we go ahead and just gently set this foot back down. So now you're still in downward dog. If you step forward, that's okay, just coming back to downward dog. And then with the in breath, raising up your right leg. See if you can keep those hips level. If you're just hanging out in downward dog, breathe out, come forward. You can certainly do some organic movements, or you can come down to child. Breathing out, drawing right into those, and coming back up. Right knee to nose, and then coming back up. Right knee to nose, and then coming back up. You're looking between your hands, right foot steps forward. And go ahead and see if you extend forward foot forward, back foot back. Looking up with your out breath, stepping forward to forward fold, letting your head hang. With your in breath, pressing your palms into your shins to extend your spine. Out breath, forward fold. And then with your in breath, we're going to extend the spine again and sit back into a chair pose. Palms can be together like this, or if you want a greater challenge, sun arms. Rotating the pinkies in, shoulders sink back. And then coming up into mountain pose, Anjali Mudra. All right. Okay, wonderful. So we've gone through some sun salutation. Body feels nice and warmed up. So you're gonna cool down a little bit, you could come back down to the mat. And if you have a strap, um, you can use your strap. If you don't have a strap, 
Um, a belt or a towel sometimes works just fine. Um, or if you have the flexibility for it, um, you can certainly just use your hands. So I'm just gonna grab a strap, just to demo this if you haven't done it before. We'll start by placing the strap on the ball of your left foot, leaning back. And you're just gonna have your arms extended fully at the strap. Knee is just a little micro band, elbows have a micro band. Then drawing leg up towards the ceiling to the fullest extent. I like to create a little bit of a tug of war here where I'm almost kind of pulling my, my arms this way, pulling my leg towards me as I push my foot the opposite direction, creating a little activation in my hamstrings so I stretch them and strengthen them at the same time. straps with your left hand. See if you can keep your right hip anchored to the ground as you move your left leg to your left side. Opening up the hips. If you want an extra challenge, you can be, look mom, no hands. You want to make sure you can still keep both of your, both sides of your pelvis connected to the ground. And with your in-breath coming back up toward the ceiling, Switching hands, crossing your midline a little bit, and bending your right knee, crossing your left ankle over your right knee. And you can do a little stretch here. By moving your left knee away from your body like this, you should be able to get a little more of a stretch. If you still don't feel it, you can pull up your right leg, grab your thigh, and draw it towards your chest while pushing this knee out with your leg, kind of using your own leg to do that. And you should feel this in your IT band, that kind of muscle that runs down by the butt and up to the side here, down the leg. I just hang out till this feels complete. Um, I might hang out here a little bit longer today personally, I just feel like it's a little bit tighter today, but since this is a yoga class, we're going to have some arbitrary time that we stop for about 20 seconds or so. I guess that's not completely arbitrary. Let your legs lay out. That's about as much time as it takes to expand the range of motion of your muscles. You're consistent about stretching them. About 20 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and place the strap around the ball of your right foot. Same thing, arms extend fully. A little micro bend of the elbows, micro bend to the knee, creating a little bit of a tug of war to activate the hamstring as you stretch it. All these forward folds are very relaxing to the nervous system. I can't tell you why, but that's just what we have learned. So I like to put them at the end of the yoga routine. And go ahead and grab both straps with your right hand. Keep your left hip anchored as you move your right leg to your right side. hands if you want. And drawing your leg back up towards the ceiling, switching hands, moving a little bit past the midline. I don't like to stay too long in this this one, but some people might like it. And then go ahead and bend left knee and cross your right leg over your left knee. You get your iliotibial band, your IT band, do whatever you need to to get that stretch. I find what I do, one of the, some things I do is I brace my right elbow against my right knee when I'm in this posture, and I kind of press my right elbow outwards to press the knee out, just to get a little more of that stretch as I'm pulling my left thigh inward. But whatever works for you.
Just release that down. Uh, constructive rest position and then returning to Shavasana. So in Shavasana, just letting your whole body connect to the ground again, being aware of your connection to the ground, starting at your heels, moving up to the backs of your calves, letting your thigh bones sink downward, and roll out to the sides, letting your tailbone roll out onto the ground, relax onto the ground. Maybe imagining those psoas muscles, feeling, remembering that feeling of stretching them, and that feeling of giving them an intense workout earlier when you're sitting in a chair. Just remembering that location in the body, feeling the psoas muscles inside. You know they don't have very much innervation, they don't have very many nerves connected there. But just being aware of that same region that you were working before, seeing if you can relax those muscles, let them Relax, let those beads on the necklace of your muscles spread apart, soften. And even your gut as you breathe out, allowing your viscera to sink downward onto those psoas muscles, and helping create more circulation there by letting your belly sink with your.